Today is all about using simple ingredients to make a beautiful appetizer featuring HEB beef broth and Pillsbury Crescent big and flaky rolls. That combined with our onions and a few other seasonings and we're going to make a delicious appetizer in the, in the style of a French onion soup. So stay with us and we'll begin. Hi, how you doing? Today we're going to make a beautiful appetizer and by appetizer I mean I'm going to serve these in these little small uh, four to five ounce, I think they're like four or five ounce um, ramekins instead of big props. It's just meant to be a couple of spoonfuls, nothing huge and heavy. Um, but we're going to start right away. I'm going to take this beautiful beef stock from HEB. This is about a quart. And I'm going to take it and put it in a, a pan. And I'm going to start to reduce it because I want the flavor of this to, to concentrate a little bit more. So while I'm doing all the other prep work, this can be concentrated in the back. <laughs> we want you to think. So sit back here on the heat, nice and low, and concentrate. Next thing is we're going to get together is onions. We're going to prep our onions for our beautiful French onion soup. And I don't know about you, but French onion soup has been one of my favorites uh, ever since I graduated from grammar school and my mother took me to a French restaurant as a celebratory meal. And they brought out this steaming hot crock of beautiful soup with this melted cheese on the top. <clears throat> and what I later discovered was a crouton underneath. And I just fell in love with French onion soup from that time on. And we're just going to take our onions and we don't want a lot of big strands of onions and we don't want a small dice. So I'm going to take, we want about half of that. So I'm going to take the core, the half of the onion, cut it down the middle half, and then slice it into like quarter inch slices, just like this. Now, these onions are going to take quite a little while, believe it or not, to slowly caramelize. So don't be in a rush, because it's not something you can rush. Not if you want the good flavor that we're going to come out with. And that's it. Just cut them like that. I'm going to cut up the rest of the onions. We're going to put it in the, in the pot, nice tall pot, stock pot, with uh, some olive oil and a little bit of salt. Start to bring out the moisture. Let me prep up the rest of the, uh, the onions, and we'll be right back. While you're out, I diced up all the onions. I put some extra virgin olive oil in this pot here. Got it to heat up. And we're going to put our onions in there <clears throat> and let them start sweating down. Just like this. You know, this whole story, um, this recipe is my mother's. She was fearless in the kitchen. She, uh, after that day when we went for that meal, she went up to the chef, she asked him, how do you make that? Can I have the recipe? Back then, they were very accommodating, Just he gave her the recipe. And uh, then she immediately started to, to make it at home for us. <laughs> that was her, one of her nice little uh, talents that she had. She would, she would go, she would learn about something, and she would have no fear in trying something new and cooking out of her comfort zone <clears throat> whatsoever. She was a, a Irish American, uh, born here of Irish and German parents, and um, she married an Italian and learned how to cook, uh, was, was known as one of the best Italian cooks in the whole area. So, 
because we had many, many parties with a lot of people, and, and everybody loved my mother's cooking. So, and this is a testament to another one of her <laughs> things she liked. She liked the French. Uh, she made us speak French when we were kids. Uh, we had French flashcards. And she liked French food, and that's why I'm making this. So, on to our next thing. Walla onions, we're just sweating them. I have these on medium low because I don't want them to burn. I just want them to sweat. I'm going to hit them with a bit of uh, kosher salt because I want the moisture to come out of them. Keep that heat nice and low. Uh, while that's happening, I'm going to mince up a couple of cloves of garlic. Even if the recipe didn't call for it, my mother put garlic in everything. Um, she felt it was very good. It added a nice flavor to everything. And we're just going to mince this up real nice and fine because we don't want anybody getting a chunk of garlic in their mouth. Just like that. I'm going to take that and mince it up a little finer. Just like that. And later on when we're ready to throw this in, not now, because not during this process. These onions are going to take about an hour to cook to get them to caramelize and get down to the, the level of brown that I want them to get to. So if I were to put this garlic in now, it would absolutely burn. So our garlics aside, here's some bay leaves that we're going to use later on. Here's some fresh thyme. We've got our stock, and like I said, this is my own little take on this because I'm doing appetizers, uh, not the full crocs that I usually do. It's just going to be a fun little couple of spoonfuls of soup with a nice little pastry shell on top. So, we're going to cook down these onions. I'm going to stir them up a bit. I'm going to let you take a look at this because it, it looks beautiful. Our stock is reducing in the back beautifully. This is what your onions look like when you start. When we're starting to do this. They're still golden brown and white. And they're all covered with the oil which is beautiful. You want them nice. Now, when they get down to a nice um, color, like a brownish, almost like my, my beautiful cutting board here, bamboo cutting board. Once they get to about that color, then I'm going to start to build the soup. Uh, midway through, I'm going to take and put in some thyme, and I'm going to put in the berries and the garlic. So, also this recipe calls for either white wine or sherry. Uh, I happen to like using sherry. Um, the, I know the people that I have coming over tonight don't like the sherry, so I'm going to use the white wine instead. So, let's let this cook, and we'll be back. Okay, the onions, it's been about 10 minutes, and the onions have <clears throat> become translucent, and a little more golden brown, a little golden, not brown, excuse me, a little golden. <clears throat> The onions have become translucent. It's been about 10 minutes. And I lowered the heat down to about two. This is an electric stove. And I threw in some bay leaves in the beef stock. And I put in uh, the, some thyme, which is a very important flavor here. And these onions usually takes about an hour. Don't rush it, turn down the heat, let it do its thing, you will love it later on. So, we'll be back. 
Remember also, do not walk away from this pot. This is not set it and forget it. You have to keep stirring this every 10 or 15 minutes. 10, 10 better, stir it every 10 minutes. You gotta move those onions around so they all get nice and caramelized. Just so I can show you what it meant by take your time, it's been about a half hour and as you can see, we're just starting to see some little signs of browning around the edges of our beautiful onions. So you want to take your time. There's no way to rush this. <laughs> All right, we're about 35 minutes in and I just added a tablespoon of butter in here just to uh, give it a little bit more luxurious texture and help it to brown a little bit more. They're looking beautiful there. Like I said, they're just starting to brown around the edges. That, um, that butter's gonna help it along. And our stock, I put it on low. It's, uh, it's looking beautiful. And just be careful with your salt content here because the onions are gonna be very, very sweet. Sometimes the boxed or canned uh, broths or stocks are a little bit salty. So you have to watch the balance as you're cooking this. Otherwise, um, it, it's going to be a beautiful dish. Um, if I had time to make the stock, I would make it, but I just don't. <clears throat> when these are all caramelized, we're going to come back. Okay, about 45 minutes has elapsed. As you can see, our onions have turned a beautiful golden brown. They're not all the way where I want them to be because some are still a little yellow. But it's absolutely beautiful. The smell between that, what I consider that one of the key ingredients with the thyme that's in there with those onions is phenomenal. And we're going to let those go for about like another 15 minutes until they're all nice and brown. Like that section right there. Just like that. Okay, that's what you're looking for. You want it to look just like that. You don't want them to disappear. A little more, lo a little longer and they're going to disappear. They're going to become mush. But we want them a little nice. In a second, I'm going to throw in the wine and the garlic and let that cook for in the last 15 minutes and then we're going to put in our stock and we're going to get ready to put this together. So we'll be right back. Okay, we're back. Uh, about another 10 minutes has elapsed since the last video. I, I grated up some mozzarella cheese and mixed it with about three tablespoons of Parmesan only because that's what my daughter likes. Uh, my mother's recipe called for a Swiss cheese, which I happen to love because it's got that nice flavor to it. Some people like to top this with Gruyere cheese. It's up to you. Whatever cheese melts nice and will brown in the oven is perfectly acceptable. Like I said earlier also, my daughter doesn't like the, the, the sherry taste, but she doesn't mind the white wine taste. So I'm going to put in about, let's see, let's throw in the garlic first. Hang on. There's those two cloves of garlic that we minced up earlier. We're just going to spin them around a little bit. Let that go for a couple of minutes. Just like that. Oh, the smell that's coming out here is amazing. Um, I'm going to let it go for a couple of minutes and then I'm going to add our white wine, which is about four to five ounces of white wine. Once the white wine reduces by about half, then we're going to throw in the stock that we've been reducing in the back. We're going to check the seasoning, make sure it's okay. And then after we check the seasoning, we're going to get a chance uh, to see how it all comes together. This is going to be going for probably about another hour, uh, building all of those flavors together. And then we're going to put it into our individual little ramekins, which are going to be so adorable. Like I said, I've never done it this way before. I've always done it the traditional way. But I had this idea that it would make a nice little uh, appetizer. Um, for this little gathering here, as soon as my daughter gets here. So, daughter gets here. So, I'm letting that garlic cook down a little bit. 
after it cooks down, I'm going to throw in the white wine and then we're going to let it, I'll show you what's going to go on after that. We'll be right back. Okay, I just put in our white wine and we're going to use that white wine now to deglaze the bottom of the pan since it's a different viscosity than the oil and the butter. It wants to bubble and boil and you're going to use that to rub around the bottom of the pan with your, with your firm spoon to get all those nice brown bits off the bottom of this pan as those onions have been caramelized. That's absolutely fabulous. There, we've got all the brown bits off the bottom of the pan. It looks nice and clean as though you washed it. That's what you want. And now I'm going to add in our, our beef stock which has been simmering away in the background. And I'm going to stir this all together. Beautiful. <clears throat> Today we're also going to make a little side dish that I want to, uh, to serve with our main meal, which is going to be a pork dish, which is um, my braised Brussels sprouts. Again, uh, this is one of those dishes people either love it or they hate it, and most of the times everybody I've given it to has loved it. So hopefully uh, you'll t turn into a Brussels sprout convert. Also, um, it's real simple. Ingredients are simple. I've got about uh, three about seven cloves of garlic here. I'm just crushing them and taking off the paper just like that. Just give them a little crush because I want these cloves whole. I don't want them diced or minced or anything like that. I want them to caramelize and become part of the dish which they do this way and actually it becomes a sought after little tidbit inside the dish. <laughs> so, is to find one of those garlic cloves that have roasted their way to perfection. Let's get rid of this. <clears throat> now, I already washed these. Now, depending on their size, I'm, I'm gonna trim off the ends and I'm going to cut them in half, just like that. Just trim off that little woodsy end, just like that, and cut them in half. I'm going to do the rest of this bunch. Then I'm going to take this skillet and I'm going to put some olive oil and some water, about a half a cup of water. Then we're going to put these all inside. And we're to, the water is going to steam them and then evaporate and it's going to leave you with the olive oil which is going to fry them a little bit. <clears throat> and they'll caramelize and everything will be absolutely delicious. But let me get these, the rest of these prepped and we'll be right back. It's funny, when I first started doing Brussels sprouts, maybe about eight, ten years ago, give or take, um, you could very rarely find them in the supermarket. Um, at best, you could find them in the frozen food section. Nobody liked them. And they were cheap, maybe about 50 cents to a dollar for a big pint of them. Now, you can't go to a uh, Top Chef's restaurant without Brussels sprouts being a part of their menu. So, just goes to show you how things progress. I'm going to take our Brussels sprouts, put them in this dry pan with our garlic, just like this. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to hit them with a bit of a generous amount of extra virgin olive oil. And we're going to go like that, just like that, maybe about four tablespoons. And we're going to shaky, 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 shake them around, get them all coated and coated with that beautiful olive oil. Now that they're all nice and glistening with that olive oil, we're going to hit them 
put some kosher salt because now the kosher salt will stick to each one of them because the olive oil and some black pepper just like that I told you this is a simple one but it tastes phenomenal when it's done and then we're going to hit it with about a uh, half a cup of water judging by the pan go up about an inch inside your pan I'm using filtered water here just like that and we'll stick them on the stove on medium to high heat and that water is going to come to a boil and the Brussels sprouts are going to steam and they're going to seep and get soft and succulent and then as the water dissipates all that's left is that nice olive oil coating that's on each one and then they're going to hit the bottom of the pan and they're going to start to caramelize and turn brown and get delicious and sweet and beautiful and it's just going to be phenomenal this maybe will take about 15 or 20 minutes and uh, as soon as they're caramelized they're done plate them up eat them up get them going so <clears throat> we'll be back as soon as the uh, I'll keep you abreast as we're cooking it but we'll be back our Brussels sprouts are beautiful and vibrant. <clears throat> Almost all of the water has dissipated. I'm going to give them their first stir um, to get uh, other sections to start to caramelize. <clears throat> and uh, just look at them, they're absolutely phenomenal looking. Okay, they sound phenomenal. You can hear that. That's sizzling. That's these Brussels spouts that were on the bottom that are caramelized. And the sugars, oh, they just look phenomenal. They're beautiful, caramelized, cooked all the way through, yet they still have a little bit of their body left. Um, they're going to be absolutely fantastic. Uh, I'm just going to, I turned off the heat. I'm just going to let them continue cooking through. I'll stir them again and then they'll be ready to plate up later on when we're ready to serve dinner. So there you have it. Beautiful caramelized Brussels sprouts. I'm going to grab one just because I can't wait and I want to taste them. It just melts in your mouth. The caramelized exterior is so sweet and delicious. You pick up that garlic and that olive oil. Very simple, but absolutely phenomenal. I'm gonna go hit it for another one. <laughs> okay, folks, our French onion soup is done. It's simmering away. It smells absolutely phenomenal. What I'm going to do, since I'm going to make these little individual servings for this party we're having, I'm going to take the ramekin and I'm going to push it down on a, a round of bread so I can get an idea of how big of a crouton I'm going to need. And then you just peel it off just like that. And you've got a nice crouton that's going to sit right in on the top of your of your soup. And we're going to do it again and then we do another one. Just press down on the bread, twist it around a little bit. And there's your crouton. That's going to fit neatly right on top of your ramekin. Now, <clears throat> what I'm going to do for that is I'm going to take a uh, baking dish and I'm going to put a little olive oil on it and I'm going to take the bread and run it around on olive oil just like this and get both sides might as well do a couple of extra pieces here just like that
And we'll make circles out of these two, just like we did with the first two. And we're going to hit this with a little bit of salt, just like that, and a little bit of pepper. If you want to use garlic or anything like that, go right ahead. This is your soup. I'm going to pop these in the oven at about 350 for about 5 or 10 minutes. I'm going to let them get a nice golden brown. <clears throat> and then we'll come back and we'll plate the rest of this up and get it in the oven so it can broil up and get nice. We'll be right back. Okay, the, uh, the buzzer for the croutons just went off. So let me get them out of the oven. Oh, there they are. They look beautiful. A beautiful golden brown. That's nice. And we're going to put them on a plate for now. Because we're going to use this baking tray again. For our soup. Alright, we have our ramekins. We have our soup. And we're going to bowl up the soup. This is just a little starter. This isn't a, a huge meal. It's three or four scoops of this. But it'll be just enough to warm them up on this cold December night. Just like that. Beautiful. Okay. Now, take your <coughs> Your croutons, mine happen to be, this is a sourdough I happen to use for this time. And just place them inside the, the ramekin, just like that. It's okay if they get moist, it's okay if it sits up a little bit. And then we're going to take, I happen to, the original one I had with my mother was Swiss cheese. So I like to stick to what I know. So this is Swiss cheese, just plain old sliced Swiss cheese. Make sure it overextends the, uh, the edges, just like that. Put plenty of cheese. And then I'm going to pop this back in the oven, under the broiler, for about four or five minutes. I may put a little more cheese on this one. And when I pull it back out of the oven, you're going to see it's absolutely gorgeous. We'll be right back. Okay, the timer for the soup just went off. It's been in the broiler at about 500 degrees for about six Six to, six to seven minutes. And it is looking absolutely gorgeous. The cheese is all browned around the outside. Let me get you in to take a look at this. I picked it up with a spatula so I could uh, get all that nice browned cheese from around the edges of the uh, roasting tray onto the plate with it because that's some of the best little bits you're going to get that beautifully roasted cheese and there's your french onion soup beautifully browned with the cheese just oozing over the sides and I'm going to give it a minute to cool down and then I'm going to try some it looks absolutely phenomenal you break through that little crust there of cheese and bread and you see that rich, beefy, oniony broth that's underneath there and it smells, the, the smell is absolutely phenomenal. And it's so warm and inviting. This is real comfort food to me. And you got that nice toasted crouton under there. And you get some of that nice cheese. As long as you don't burn your tongue off. <laughs> it's absolutely phenomenal. Go ahead, give it a shot. Try it. It's a great recipe. I hope you learned something. Come on back.